Welcome back for another tutorial today. Uh, today we're going to be making a monolayer of this pretty cool iron phosphorus sulfur system. Uh, it's a monoclinic cell, um, which is pretty interesting. It's an uncommon cell, I'd have to say. Um, it's also interesting is you have this decomposes to thing here in the materials project. Anyways, this is the system and we're going to make a monolayer of the system. Uh, it's a pretty interesting process. I had one of the channel viewers mentioned that they want to see it, so let's go ahead and do it. So if you're in materials project, uh, by the way, in order to get here, uh, just Google the material and then type materials project and it'll bring you here pretty much. This is the materials project ID if you're curious. So let's go ahead and click this sieve button, then I click conventional standard. I then click here and it opens Vesta for me. Um, anyways, here's our system. So let's go ahead and select A that will center it. So how do we go from this point here to building a nice looking monolayer of this system? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is, it always confuses me when Vesta auto perceives these bonds outside the crystals and the bonds also kind of confuse me as well. So I always just go to edit uh, bonds and I just delete the bonds between the atoms and select apply. And you can see our crystal is much simpler now to work with. So what we're gonna to have to do is if we want a monolayer, we're gonna to have to have an, it helps me also to visualize the actual monolayer. You can see here, if we expand the boundary along Z, uh, you can actually see the a nice looking monolayer here. So how do we get a structure that actually contains this monolayer? Uh, let's go back to one. Uh, you can do this by going to edit, edit data unit cell, and then we're just going to transform uh, the matrix by scaling it uh, by two in the C as in cat dimension. Select OK. Yes. Search atoms in the new unit cell and add them as new sites. Select OK. Apply. And you can see now we've actually expanded the crystal. And the previous option using boundary, it just shows you the expansion, what it would be, but doesn't actually add the new atoms in. If you do the method I just showed you, you actually can expand and incorporate the atoms into the new cell. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to delete these atoms here. Okay, and now we have what appears to be the mono, our desired monolayer. Now before we save this, we have to, uh, we're gonna basically be saving these coordinates as an XYZ eventually. And if we just save them as an XYZ right now, Vesta will include all the atoms you see on the screen. So when you save as an XYZ in Vesta, it saves all the atoms on the screen. And obviously we don't wanna save atoms that are periodic replicas of each other. Uh, it may not be obvious, but for example, you can see if we save these atoms that are replicas of each other, this doesn't make sense because when we go put this into electronic structure calculations, it'll think we have double counted an atom and they actually will tend to crash. So. For example, this uh, sulfur atom is S15. You can see they're both atom number 32, right? So if we include these both in our file, uh, you'd be double counting atoms and you simply would have an inaccurate structure. So what we're gonna do is we have to, if we wanna add vacuum along C, then we have to delete periodicity along A and B. So first thing I'm gonna do is delete these atoms. Okay, so now when we Man, when we when the when the the electronic structure code eventually is expanding periodically in this B dimension, it won't double count these atoms on the edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'll select B because we have to delete periodicity in A. And here periodicity in A is only occurring along this these phosphorus atoms here. So all you have to do is just delete uh, these atoms here. So you can see it's these two phosphorus atoms we have to delete. Let's go ahead and delete them. Okay, now we can go ahead and save this as an XYZ file, but first let's save it as a VASP. And the VASP file will actually end up saving the cell we had when we had first done the uh, edit, edit data unit cell expansion in the C dimension, C as in cat. So let's go ahead and go to file, export data. So we're gonna first export this as a VASP, okay? So let's go ahead and go here. And so you can see I already have it here saved, but I'll go ahead and type it in again. FEPS3 mono layer, and then I save as a VASP. So for me, it's gonna ask to replace. You just select replace. So you would just, you wouldn't get this. And we're gonna save it in Cartesian coordinates. This actually is a very important step here. And select okay. 
Now what we're gonna do is we're going to export this as an XYZ, which will save the atoms on the screen. So what we're gonna do here is do FEPS3 monolayer, and the file type will now be XYZ. Let's go ahead and click save. And for me, I have this replace option. For you, you likely won't. So Vesta has been kind of weird and it just exited out on me. That's no problem. Let's go ahead and open that back up. And uh, yeah, so now you can see I have the option to open this. I just, I press Command O, I'm on the Mac, and that's to open. If you're on Windows, you do Control O. Anyways, let's go, we have Vesta back open, back open now. Let's go ahead and head over to our text editor. Here I'm using PyCharm. So I have these two things open. I have the this the VASP we saved, and I have the XYZ we saved. Now, to make sure your XYZ is correct, it, well, first things, you'll notice the XYZ only contains 20 atoms, whereas here we have much more atoms. And that's because we cut off, uh, we, cut a, we deleted a lot of uh, atoms in our VASP file. So just to reopen this VASP file to show you, we had this file, right? And let's delete the bonds once more. We had deleted these atoms at the top here, right? We had deleted these atoms at the bottom, and then we had deleted some periodic replica atoms as well, right? So those are the atoms we deleted. Let me press uh, Command W. It'll get me out of here. So you would press Control W if you're on window to delete the active screen. So the XYZ will contain less because we had cut a lot of atoms out. One thing to notice though is that the stoichiometry is still correct. We have four irons, four phosphorus, and 12 sulfur. So what we do now is we go ahead and copy the, this, these coordinates, four, four, 12, remember that, and we paste them into here. So I'm just shift drag deleting these. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete these now. So we delete the title here the atom uh, symbol because it's read from these two lines here. So the first four will be iron, the following four will be phosphorus, and the following 12 will be sulfur. I'll go ahead and change this. This up here, this first line is just a comment. I'll show you where the comment comes in. And then we're gonna add 20 angstroms of vacuum. So I'll put uh, 33. So let's go ahead now and head back to Vesta. A PyCharm saves automatically when you make changes. And I did Command O to open. Uh, you would do Control O if you're on Windows. If you want to manually open, you go to File Open. Okay. So you can see here it tells me the shortcut of Command O. So I do Command O. And you can see here there is our beautiful monolayer in our crystal and we have successfully made. Now let's go ahead and expand this. Let's put it on the uh, standard viewer. We'll go to boundaries and let's expand it uh, minus two, two, minus two, two, select apply. And you can see that, you know, everything is basically looking correct. We have our very nice looking monolayer of this pretty complicated system. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's uh, that's all we got for this one. Um, let me try to think if there's anything else. I don't quite know if there's anything else, but, um, oh yeah, yeah, the name. So the name that we put here, where does this come into play? It comes into play when you go to edit, edit data here. So this is where it comes into play. It's read from the vast file. And it's, so when you have multiple materials in here, uh, you'll you'll be able to see different names. And the names of the materials are actually read not from the file name. You can see the file name has this underscore. The material name is actually that first line in the vast file. So you can see I have the dash here, just like I have here. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Take care, everyone.